Hello, beautiful family of Patria. Good to be back with an online sermon, our weekly sermons that we have decided to continue with. And I'm so glad after the last announcement from the president that we stuck to online sermons the previous time. Sunday did not replace our sermon series, so we continued with online. So therefore, we are just continuing as we did. I did send out a message um, that was sent out to the whole of the congregation to explain our next step. So I'm not going to repeat all of that, seeing that that was a 10-minute explanation. If you did not receive that, please text the hotline number if you want to receive that to see what our decision is as to how we're going to continue. We are going to continue just in short with our Sunday services. However, we have asked that if you are cautious or you feel a responsibility in your kingdom thinking as workers during the, your weekly working as church out there, we've asked that you don't come to the main um, Sunday gathering, but that we will set up time slots during the week of next week where we will invite the whole of the congregation to book into different venues with different leaders to come together, to pray together, to worship together and to just be church. And then also to continue in those groups. Our families gathering as we continue with Kingdom School. Families gathering as we continue to bry, have coffee and speak about the Word of God. Because life does continue. Okay, so we are so excited about this week um, and the sermon that we're going to go into. We are continuing with our sermon series as to pursuing the Holy Spirit and His gifts. Last two weeks we looked at a culture of pursuing honor. Now we're looking into the culture of pursuing the Holy Spirit and His gifts. And we're going to look into this for the next two weeks. Before we get to our sermon for this morning, I just want to give you a quick announcement. Something that we are very excited about. All parents, we are announcing our focus course. Raising Kingdom Thinkers to our children. This is going to be um, on the 2nd of July and the 3rd of July. So it's a, almost a month away. 400 uh, Rand per couple, 200 Rand per single person. And you can register at the Patria offices. Um, this to us is so important. The raising the next generation of leaders and Kingdom Thinkers to us is extremely important. As part of every nation and also as part of the mandate that God has given to us as Patria Family Church. So therefore, we invite all parents to book these dates. It's going to be an exciting time, and uh, it's really going to be fun to get together and speak about the Word of God, and to us as parents, what is our responsibility in raising kingdom thinkers. We're going to go into the sermon of this morning, but before we get there, we're just going to set the mood again with just a beautiful song to set our hearts I'm going to pray over the song and our hearts wherever we find ourselves before we go into the sermon. So, Abba Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you so much for your love and your care. We thank you that we can honor you in everything that we do. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you do not stand back for a virus. We thank you that as church we can continue to live with joy, that we will not become depressed, that in no way we will sit under a virus, but we will continue to live as kingdom thinkers, not above the law, but Lord above a virus. For we do not fear sickness, for by your stripes we have been healed. And so this morning we pray, Holy Spirit, as we look into pursuing you and your gifts, that truly this is the reason we can be church. It's because of you. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you will do a magnificent work in us during the next two weeks and raise us up to the level that you want us as church to operate. Amen. Let's enjoy a beautiful time of worship together before we go into the sermon. i 
comes to light from death into life his grace changes everything from broken to whole stain to whiter than snow his grace changes everything his grace changes everything there's no sin too great there's no pain too In Kingdom School this week, we started with a subject of grace. And so therefore, your grace changes everything. It's something that the church should live by. When we think about the life of Jesus Christ and what he came to live, if you've ever watched the series or are busy watching the series, The Chosen, I just love the way that that series shows the life of Jesus and the disciples. I've never seen it in such a fresh way. But I love the way that you can place yourself into the characters. Um, I'm not going to go into the theology and is everything 100% correct and is that the exact way that it happened. I do love the way that the editors and producers are producing this. However, I want to say it's, it gives us an opportunity to, to place ourselves into different roles 
like for instance Peter, like for instance Matthew, having been a tax collector as Matthew and understanding that having to push into being a disciple of Jesus, Jesus called him, he knew that Jesus was a good reason for him to lay down everything. But just that clash with the other disciples that I've never really thought of and how difficult that should have been or must have been um, for, for someone like Matthew. When you see a strong Peter, you know, in the way that he stands strong and, and uh, I just love the way that it helps us think about that. Now, Jesus diligently walked with these disciples for three years. We look at that, and when it comes to church today, what we see is when it comes to us building characters, doing discipleship with people, um, there's reasons why people get out of Christianity early. It's because not everyone that comes into Christianity comes in with a pure, honest um, conviction of their sin. Christianity is that turning point where you recognize that you are a sinner and that you need a Savior and that you are willing to lay down your life to follow the Savior. That's the conviction. That is the, the part where everything changes. And one of the things that we've seen is and the reason why we form part of every nation and the way that we do um, biblical foundations, the way that we do victory weekends, the way that we do one-to-one -one discipleship, where we, where we always present the Word of God as preeminent to everything. We say, what does the Word of God say to us? What did Jesus do? What does the Holy Spirit expect of us? How do we lay ourselves down? When we come into a subject like, for instance, Lordship in a one-to-one -one discipleship, Lordship is that challenge of, was that conviction that you had in the beginning? Was that a true conviction and was your conversion into Christianity pure and true? So when we come to the subject of lordship, that's where the reality hits us. Was your conversion true? Will you lay down everything to follow Jesus Christ? Will you leave your old life behind? When you go through baptism, are you laying down all of your old life including your finances. And it's not to say that you're not allowed to have finances or enjoy wealth or create wealth. It's just, are your finances his as well? Will you do with your finances as he tells you to? See, everything becomes his. And then Jesus spoke to his disciples and his disciples constantly had this question where they said, Jesus, we just don't understand when we listen to you and, and you do these things, you do these miracles by a power that we do not understand. And, and then Jesus spoke to them at a certain time and he said, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to go back to my father. And they couldn't understand why. They wanted Jesus to rule. When you read through the book of John, it's a beautiful place where in John 5 and 6, it goes into Jesus speaking to them. And there's this one statement that Jesus said, he knew that the crowd came in masses because they wanted to crown him as king. Here's the thing. He was already the king of Israel. The thing is just they expected this ruler to go and sit in the kingdom, into the palace, to make him king, to rule over Israel, so that the Roman soldiers and the Roman guards and the, and the Roman empire could be overruled. That's what they expected. And Jesus came and said, my kingdom doesn't work in that way. So then he said to them, I can see that you are sad that I'm leaving. But here's the thing. When I go, I will send you one. And then you will understand. And that send you one phrase meant, I will send you my Holy Spirit. And when you have the same spirit that I have, that helps me now be in connection with heaven and my Father to do the will of the Father, then you will understand how come I have chosen a better vehicle than just a throne as king? But my vehicle becomes church. My kingdom becomes church. I'm living through my church. I'm going to live through my church. Same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead in us. To make us church so that we as church can live out the love that Jesus wants to live into this world. 
So when, as every nation, we say that we want to continue in, in these three cultures, to focus on these three cultures, a culture of honor, a culture of pursuing the Holy Spirit and His gifts, and a culture of continuous biblical learning. When we speak about a culture of pursuing the Holy Spirit, we must understand what that truly means to you and me. I want to read you a few scriptures, but before I get there, listen to this statement that I just that I just want to quote. If we diligently work on living through the Spirit and allowing Him to control our thoughts, we will grow in our longing to be with God, and this longing will provoke us into a deeper seeking. Ultimately, this will lead to intimacy with God, which will grow into maturity in Christ. Now, I wrote down this piece as part of Kingdom School where we teach on pursuing the Holy Spirit or the, the, the subject on the Holy Spirit to, to introduce us to who is the person of the Holy Spirit. Not just the Holy Ghost. It's not a ghost like Casper. The Holy Spirit's the person, the third Godhead in a triune God as one. Person of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, intimacy with God happens through that. If we diligently work on living through the Spirit, that's capital S, and allowing Him to control our thoughts, we will grow into our longing to be with God. And this longing will provoke us into a deeper seeking. Ultimately, this will lead to intimacy with God, which will grow into maturity in Christ. I love the way that we think about life through the Spirit by quoting Romans 8 verse 6. See, all of us have these two, I don't want to call it personalities or people or persons, or, but we, that we have a two-part to us, a flesh part and a spirit part. The spirit is who you are eternally. That eternity is either going to be an eternity with Christ in heaven or an eternity away from Christ in hell because the choice in this life is given to us whether we're going to see that God is the creator, he made us and choose him. Satan wants to make people angry at God for giving us that choice. But if he didn't give us a choice, it wouldn't be called love because then you would have been forced to love him or to, to follow him. I see that as the beauty of love, to give me a choice so that when I choose, it is love back because I choose love back. I love God for being my creator and I choose his way. So he builds my character, not by just touching me and, 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 and just controlling my thoughts. He, he, he touches my character by giving me circumstances and situations and tests that I can grow into the likeness of Jesus Christ by constant, constantly obeying what the Holy Spirit brings in accordance to the Word of God, the Word being Jesus, the Holy Spirit convincing me that the Word is true that his word cannot return void. And in that situation, thinking about a, a, a scripture like Romans 8 verse 28 that says, God will make everything work out for the good for those who love him. To have that scripture as a, I accept the word of God, I believe the word of God, I confess the word of God, so therefore I renounce every lie and I do the word. Now, what comes into line is Romans 8 6 that says, if the fleshly nature controls your mind it leads to death but if the holy spirit controls your mind it leads to life and peace and giving the holy spirit control over our thoughts is a choice and that is a choice out of love because i trust god and see this is where satan has a very very unique scheme against humanity because when it comes to father relationships many of us have been hurt when it comes to leadership relationships where people were above us and we were supposed to trust them, some people have hurt us in our journey. When it comes to anything, if there was any lie, anything that Satan brought against me while growing up that was supposed to be a model of church, a model of God, 
anything that he could bring against God early on to make you think that God is a harsh God, a hard father, that he doesn't care, that he doesn't love. That's his strategy against us now trusting God. But when we allow the Holy Spirit who becomes a comforter, a healer, a teacher, a guidesman, when he comes in and you start to experience that, when you read this then in, con in conjunction with Romans 8 verse 6, if the fleshly nature controls your mind leads to death, you'll stress and worry and fear and be angry. But if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, if we diligently work on living through the Spirit and allowing Him to control our thoughts, we will grow into our longing to be with God and this longing will provoke us into a deeper seeking. Ultimately, this will lead to intimacy with God, which will grow into maturity in Christ. So when we speak about creating the culture of pursuing the Holy Spirit and His gifts. During the last few weeks when we gathered as church on a Sunday morning, we have said we're going to stick to online sermons. And when we gather, we're going to allow testimony to go out from congregants, brothers and sisters in Christ and, and sons in the house to testify as to the goodness of God. We're going to trust for the miraculous healing of people. And God has really done miracles so far. As church, we want to push in to constantly make sure that we make room in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our services for the Holy Spirit to move, to bring healing to hearts, to bring healing to bodies, to touch people in a miraculous way, to bring breakthrough in companies and businesses, to bring breakthrough in new opportunities for employees, to stand with church and not only unite us in unity, through the Holy Spirit, but to bring about the kingdom mandate that He has given us because that He lives through the Spirit. Now, I want to read you because the book of John is a beautiful book when it comes to specifically Holy Spirit thinking. John is a writer that says he's a, he's a, a friend of Jesus. He's close to Jesus. He calls himself the disciple that Jesus loved. So you, you can see that he had a soft spirit, John, sons of thunder. Now, John writes this, and I'm going to read you from three different chapters, John 14, John 15, John 16. Then we're going to go into another book that John wrote, which was 1, 2, and 3, John, right at the end. But I want to read you three consecutive chapters because this is a story that builds up about what is the Holy Spirit going to assist and help us with. So let's go into John 14, verses 16, 17, and then 26. This is introduction to the Holy Spirit. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He dwells with you, and will be in you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to you your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Beautiful scripture. That in itself, if you meditate on that just for this whole week, you'll recognize that as Christians, we have that Holy Spirit that wants to help us. And bring us to the words that Jesus spoke. Bring the words that Jesus spoke. And the, and the works that Jesus did into remembrance. To say, you will do the same works as I did, even greater ones. John 15, 26 says, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Again, in the next chapter, Jesus said, the, the Spirit will testify of me. He will testify of what I did and how I could do it. But again, it speaks of the Helper that will come, sent from the Father, and that it is the Spirit of truth. Not just the Spirit of things that seem true, the Spirit of truth. Okay, so if it's, if it's the Spirit of truth and Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
and the spirit of truth is given to us. The spirit of Jesus being truth. We must understand that the moral giver, the one that is the reason for morality, and the moral giver, the one that, that, that gave all the laws by which we live, the, the, the one that is above all, has no beginning and no end, the Alpha and the Omega, the one that is constantly just the same, when we focus on God through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Truth comes in and He testifies of Jesus being the way, the truth and the life, then we can choose life and peace in the Holy Spirit because I have already died. Death has nothing on me because I already have eternity in Him. He becomes my seal. He becomes the anointing. He becomes my proof. He becomes my guarantee of heavenly things that are to come. And therefore, I want to live my life here as Jesus did because it's not about this life. Everything I make a decision on, everything I base my opinion on, anything and everything that I focus on when it comes to my finances is about a life to come. It's not about instant gratification anymore. It's not about just receiving and getting everything I want. It's to say, because I know what He has done for me, I'm going to lay my life down for Him and allow Him to live through me. So to have a culture of pursuing the Holy Spirit and His gifts, we must look into these scriptures. I'm going to read you John 16, verse 7 to 14. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send Him to you. And when He comes, He will convict the world of its sin and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to be with my Father, and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear with them. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you the things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. He will, he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Now, I'm not sure if, when, when you read this, it does to you what it does to me. But every single time I read the Word of God, it was Holy Spirit breathed. It's the same Spirit that was in Jesus Christ. And I think to myself that not only is it like in biblical times, we live in biblical times because the Bible was given to us. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit speaks of where the work started, it's in the book of Acts, when, when, when the work that Jesus Christ showed to his disciples through the three years of discipleship, when we go into the book of Acts, it's the Acts of the Apostles, which is what? The continuation of the life of Jesus Christ through his church. So how did Jesus continue when he died, was risen from dead, rose to heavenly places and then sent his spirit to continue his work through us. He and you becoming part of that plan. 1 John 2 verse 26 says the following. Listen to this. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Jesus says to us that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is the one that helps us, the helper that will testify of Jesus and the work that he has done. 
There's seven things I want to highlight on the Holy Spirit for this week. And these seven things I want you to meditate on during this week. And then go into the scriptures that we just read in John. And meditate on these scriptures as we focus on continuing our culture of pursuing the Holy Spirit and His gifts. And the seven things on the Holy Spirit we want to teach are these. He is a divine personality. So therefore you can have relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of truth. He is the comforter and the helper. He abides forever. He is our guide and our teacher. He testifies of Jesus and glorifies Him. And He convicts the world of sin. If you go and read through the scriptures that we just read now, all seven of those points are highlighted by the words that Jesus spoke as to this person of the Holy Spirit. He Himself, the Spirit of Truth, that helped Jesus Christ be the Jesus Christ in man that He was. And Christ surrendered His whole as even though being God, submitted to becoming human, and therefore in human form, submitting 100% and wholly to the Holy Spirit, who spoke through him and did through him. That is a beautiful work. And therefore he says, and I want to do this through you. Now, when we go into this week, I want you to focus on these things, because I can see through something like covid and what is currently happening on, I can see a strong spirit of depression coming over people. And therefore, if we are not being led by the Holy Spirit now, we will not recognize that there's an abnormality in life at the moment. And if you don't recognize the abnormality, you will, um, in a wrong way, judge the wrong things. And therefore, make the battle fleshly instead of seeing it as spiritual. This battle is spiritual. And so therefore, you need to recognize that there are only two kingdoms, a kingdom of light and a kingdom of darkness. And I want to show you the two ways in which God leads and the way that Satan leads. We've looked at this many times previously, but I want to re-emphasize this. God stills you. Satan rushes you. God reassures you. Satan frightens you. God leads you. Satan pushes you. God enlightens you. Satan confuses you. God forgives you. Satan condemns you. God calms you. Satan stresses you. God encourages you. Satan discourages you. God comforts you. And Satan worries you. Church, it's so important that we recognize that we are being led by the Holy Spirit who produces inside of us His fruit. And therefore, we need to recognize that what we as humans have to train ourselves in. So these four things I want us to train in. Not only the seven things we need to understand of the Holy Spirit, but these four things in pursuing the Holy Spirit and His gifts, we need to Focus on in training ourselves. Firstly, to meditate on the Word of God. To practice the Word of God. Giving the Word first place in your life. So having a biblical worldview and instantly obeying the voice of the Spirit. To most of us, that means that if we train ourselves in that way, instantly obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit is just to do in line with your conscience. Because God has given everyone a conscience and your conscience makes it clear what is right and wrong. So to live in accordance to your conscience, to many, that will be the start. This is a growing process involving training and practicing. It's not happening overnight, but over a period of time as you work on it. No Christian or no baby has been born mature. No Christian has been born mature. So just in conclusion, before we end off the sermon and I pray over this word, what is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? What if you listen to the Holy Spirit and do in accordance to the Holy Spirit, will your life look like? Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
long-suffering, which is patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So church, as we go into this week and we meditate on these things, and we look into those four points, we meditate on the Word of God. We practice the Word of God. We give the Word of God first place and we instantly obey the voice of the Spirit. Because if we do that, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit as helper and comforter will become a reality because we will be led by one that unites all of us in love, in the unity to become as mature as Jesus Christ has been and, and is. And in that love, we as church will stand united and be the answer that the world needs now. Let's pray together. Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your concern over us, Lord, to, that you look at us as your children and you care deeply. I pray over every heart, Lord, that listened to the sermon, and I pray that you will use this in a mighty, mighty way. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for your care and for your love. That you are the one that came from heaven into our world to make us be connected with heavenly places. So that when we read Galatians, it says, constantly fix your minds on the things which are in heaven and not on earth. And we can choose in a moment to be in heavenly places with God, with Jesus, through you, Holy Spirit, who connects us. I pray into every household that feels stress. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that through your Holy Spirit, you will help them stand up and say no to stress. If there is a spirit of depression, in the name of Jesus Christ, we command spirit of depression to leave. Lord, any spirit that wants to touch your children, pray through your Holy Spirit that you will stand up in their faith. That they will see it's by choice in allowing you to be you. That we are strong. That we are united. And that we can say, stronger is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Amen. Love you so much. Pray that you will meditate on these scriptures. That you will meditate on these points. And um, we hope to receive many testimonies of how the Holy Spirit starts to break through into your homes. Church, we are not submissive to a virus that wants to bring a massive depression over this world. We are church, we are victorious, and we live for our King. So let us praise His name in every circumstance and see the fruit of the Holy Spirit be lived through us wherever we go. Love you so much. Bye-bye.